a little helper with my announcements today. I want to eat too. <laughs> Lori goes to me before the service. She goes, can we do a fun song before the service? And it, she goes, it has clapping. I said, no, we're Baptist. We don't clap. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for, uh, we're going to do that all through Missions Month. We're excited to have you. Welcome to First Baptist Church. If it's your first time or first time in a long time, if you don't mind, there's a card in front of you. You're supposed to be giving announcements. You got anything to say to everybody? No. No? All right. Short and quick. Um, there's a little connection card in front of you, and uh, just fill it out so we can have a record of your visit and get to know you, and you can get to know us a little bit. I promise we will not bug you, bother you, flood your email, or anything like that. We'll just send Pastor Cody to your house and have a three-hour meeting just to introduce you. So, <clears throat> kidding, kidding. So we have a lot to do. We have a lot full, full, full load. We're excited to, finally, it's really been since the start of COVID, the first time we've been able to have our missionaries come and update us. We have some new ones. We have some older ones. I mean, that we've we've supported for a longer time, not in age. And so uh, we have some of my fa dearest ones. Uh, Tim and Barb Vermilia will be with us today. I know you. they're near and dear to our heart as a church. How long have we uh, been in partnership with you guys? 36 years we've been in partnership with the Vermilias. So, yeah. <clears throat> So I'm not going to do a ton of offerings. You can look through it. Uh, there's, sev there's several small groups that are meeting throughout the week. There's the family resources table out in the back uh, for families. Uh, Joy Club is coming up October the 10th. Uh, there's a new small group that is more geared towards crafting and fellowship on Mondays. Uh, our family counseling ministry is thriving. If you need someone to walk with you or th through something with you, there's several uh, trained lay counselors in our church that are able, able to uh, walk with you through all of that. So uh, each month or each week, I'm sorry, we're going to have a missionary with us. Next week, we're going to have Heather Har. She's a missionary to Russia. And so I'm sure many of you are going to have lots of questions, especially everything going on in Russia and Ukraine. And uh, she's, she sent out a letter last uh, two days ago that I was reading about, you know, what does it look like with the, the draft and her, their ministry and their, her pastor over there. And so uh, she's going to be giving an update each, so how it's going to work, each missionary that's going to come is going to be giving an update in the Sunday school hour. We're going to have combined Sunday school, and they're going to be giving an update and uh, a place to answer questions and just to, just a fellowship with the missionary. Some will speak, some won't speak uh, during this month, and so uh, it's going to be a great month. So we're really excited. It's really been the first time since covid started that we've been able to get our missionaries it's different and it's unique we're going to do it a whole month instead of like a big conference but that's all right we're excited just to have our missionaries be able to come and fellowship with us and get an update of what's been happening over the last couple of years so at this time joanne she's on the missions team she's going to come and she's going to give an update uh, for the mcphail fossey so joanne you can make your way up here the mcphail fossey is a missionary to cameroon that we have taken on since covid and they if you remember, we did an online presentation with him. That was in the height of COVID. So many of you haven't gotten to know him yet. So she's going to give a little update and uh, a prayer request, and then I will. Then we can sing. Sing. Up. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, church family. Um, welcome to October, Missions Month. Um, I am a member of the missions team, and um, we are hoping as a team to highlight a few of our missionaries every, every Sunday. So um, I do want to let you know that there is a sheet out in the foyer. Just It's on the uh, back of the um, offering box that has all of our missionaries. It has who we support, what we support them for. So um, grab one of those and, and be informed and then pray over these, okay? Okay, so um, on our, on our um, we support a total of 34 missionaries. 10 of them are retired. Nine of them are here locally in Michigan. And so that leaves the other 15 that are scattered various different places. Um, so, you know, like I said, just grab one of those sheets so you'll know where they are, what, what, how we support them. 
and, and know that they are in need of our prayers. Um, so I'm going to highlight uh, Brian and Heather McPhail Fossey. We took them on in um, 2020 during COVID. They have five children. They have three sons, two daughters, uh, of which they have adopted. They um, are serving and have been serving in uh, Cameroon, Africa since 2016. Their, their sons, being adults, stayed in the States while, they, uh, while the two daughters went with them to Cameroon. Um, also, there was an article that was written in the um, Baptist Mid Missions little pamphlet called Advance, and it, it gives a lot of information that probably won't cover all of that, so if you get an opportunity, go ahead and pick that up and read it. Um, okay, let me see here. Um, so I've also been in contact with um, Brian via Facebook Messenger, so um, he kind of updated me on some of the things that they are doing, which is, is covered in that article, but um, I also asked him to send me um, a, a list of his most urgent prayer requests. Um, Brian, Brian they're, they're, when he sent me his email, I was, I was overwhelmed by how much he is actually doing. Um, his hands are in every aspect, and I'm sure Heather's are too. She's probably working behind the scenes, and, and, and you know, any of us who, who work behind the scenes, we know that we sometimes are the backbone for a, a, a project to, to, you know, come to fruition. So, um, but Brian is working on developing a mentorship uh, program with the students at uh, Bethlehem College and Seminary. He is an instructor of leadership development for starting small home groups, um, which Pastor is always talking about. Those small groups are so important. Um, and he and his wife, Heather, are um, mentors to many of the young married couples there. He uh, leads church planting with several groups in several different areas, not just in his own little area, but several other areas. He is in the process of implementing a thing called print on demand. It's a book printing um, system, but just like, as we've seen delays because of shipments and all that, they have seen delays in getting their equipment to complete that project. So that is one of his prayer requests that those things will come in so they can get this system up and going. Um, Brian is also involved in the Bibles International, getting to know the translation teams so that he can provide project coordination there for them. Um, now, they are the, the, uh, the family is going to be coming. They, they have a furlough coming up in mid-February, so they'll be here in the States from February until like the first part of June. So hopefully we'll get a chance to, to see them and hear from them then. Um, but, and, and that's probably pretty much what I have, but I do want, he did send me a list of prayer requests and I did make copies of them. They're out there on the connection table. Um, so I, I just think it's so important. Um, I mean, just knowing how much they are doing and you know, uh, how much they need, not just our, our financial support, but our prayer support too. Um, it, it's crucial and I know that they covet that as much as they need and covet our, our financial support too. Um, so one of his, his first prayer requests, and he had like six of them, but I'm, I'm the one that I think probably is the most important that hit me the hardest was um, that he is requesting uh, prayer for their mental, physical, and emotional strength. So if you can think about it, um, you know, being there, th that is not their home. That is their mission field. Their family is back here. And to be out on a mission field is, is hard. It's, it's, you know, um, I, I had just a little taste of it when, I, when a small group of us from this church went on a missions trip and, and you know, it, it wasn't anything but like nine days and that, that was hard. But it was crucial for us as a team to know that people were praying us, you know, through that time there. So, um, but anyways, just trying to coordinate the missions um, aspect of where he is 
he and Heather, um, but also holding and, and gi giving ground work, you know, keeping their children grounded too, you know, in a, a land that is, you know, foreign to them. So they have asked for prayer requests for that from, for a missionary, from a missionary aspect and also from a family aspect, you know, to, to be able to ground their children in themselves. So thank you very much for listening and y for your time, and please keep them in prayer. All right, let's pray for our service, and let's, let's keep the McPhail Fosses in prayer as we pray as well. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to gather, Lord, as a church family, those that you've called out of sin and into fellowship with Christ, and Lord, how sweet it is to gather together as a family. And Lord, where you are in the midst, Lord, is that we, as we gather your presence, and Lord, the joy and the sweetness, and, and Lord... But Lord, as we gather, I pray that it's so much more than just a gathering or something that we do, Lord, that it, but it would be fellowship with your spirit and with yourself, Father, that your spirit would work in us and change us, and Lord, that we'd be conformed to the likeness of Christ, and Lord, that you'd use the songs, you'd use the scripture readings, you would use, um, Lord, the prayers and the, in, in the preaching of your word to shape us into Christ's likeness. Make us more like you for your glory. Lord, and I pray for the McPhail Fossey family, Lord, a family near and dear to us and uh, from this area, Lord. And uh, Lord, being on, a, being on a distant foreign mission field is heavy. The burden is heavy. And Lord, um, especially having family and children and, and Lord, it, it, the burdens that they carry um, are very difficult. And so, Father, I pray for the McPhail Fosseys, Lord, that they would find strength and in your word, they would find comfort and your spirit would continue to minister to them, Lord, that your spirit would be the paraclete, the, the one that carries them and, and sustains them and gives them life. And Father, that you would sustain their ministry. Lord, I pray for uh, Brian's wife, Lord, behind the scenes and carrying the heavy burdens of, of the family and the home and the ministry and Lord, very few often get recognized for the the weight they carry but father i pray that you would that you would strengthen her and give her strength emotional strength mental strength and spiritual strength father that you would strengthen them and lord that you would give them boldness to proclaim the gospel of jesus christ and and train pastors that would start churches all over cameroon father be with their children and lord uh, just encourage their children and lord i pray that you would protect their minds from the evil one who would seek to cause them to despair and to be discouraged. Father, help us as a church family to reach out to them, to love them, maybe to send them a card, and to minister to them, even while we're here. So, Lord, meet with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with me as... Well, both of us have a... <clears throat> we're going to read our psalms this morning. And it's October, so we're going to start a new psalm, and then we're going to sing... This, this psalm. So we're going to begin reading in Psalms 100. Um, so let us begin reading at, in Psalms 100 and verse 1. Would you read with me? Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are not in ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. See all these kids and young people up here serving the Lord. It's, that's my favorite part. I don't know. I think that's what happens when you start getting older. You like to see young people up here serving. I think I'm joining the, the older club here. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys get those little uh, teardrops in your eyes when you see young people up here serving. The greatest thing they can ever do with their life is follow Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. All right. We're going to have our, our missionaries, uh, Tim and Barb Vermilia, come up and Yep, just like I said, about a half hour.
So they're used to two and a half hours. So <laughs> look at all the dirty looks I get you. I, they don't need much of an introduction. They're special to us as a church family. So welcome them. So that's a setup because if he's not telling the truth and we go over 1130, then we'll get the dirty looks. <laughs> now, if he's telling the truth and he takes two and a half, then if we let you out on time, we're the best thing since sliced bread, right? <laughs> All right, now, um, I think probably, do I need to turn this on? Oh, I am. Well, wonderful. That was easy. Okay. Um, well, well, first of all, um, just need to make sure I know which button to push and when. Uh, is this thing ready to go? I will not get uh, electrocuted. <laughs> I am not turned on. Okay. This one's on, right? So you'll get to hear Barb. That's good. Well, I'll just say while he's turning on <laughs> that uh, we're so thankful to be here. And uh, we have counted on your, your prayers and your love, your interest, and your support for 36 years. And uh, we don't take that lightly. And we consider you partners. We could not be in, in Quebec doing what we, our heart loves to do if it wasn't for First Baptist of Fenton. And thank you so much for your faithfulness. And it's always a delight to come back and to see what God's doing. And that does our heart good, because we're old, to see all those young people and, and uh, hear the music. And that last song was a really, really a deep and a special song. And so thank you so much for the privilege to be here today. So just call your attention to the uh, table in the back, out in the foyer on my left. Uh, you will see a card that looks like this, two-sided. Normally, they are bright colors. I went to Kinko's to print on five bright colors, and they said, we have no color card stock, and seemed to suggest it was Canada's fault. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't do anything about it, uh, but... Anyway, so normally, yes, when we come, we provide an update. So prayer requests up to date. We just printed this yesterday. Um, and if, so if you want to take one of those and be reminded of how you can be praying with us. And there's also a picture prayer card. You may look at it and say, I don't know who the guy is next to Barb. You'll recognize Barb in the picture. Um, I've uh, taken a little hair off and added a little hair down here. But it is still Tim and Barb, and uh, we do appreciate your prayers. So we want to give you an update, and uh, hopefully we'll see this. Uh, it's going to work. And um, make sure I've, I've used these and had them upside down and going backwards, but here we go. Um, this is our family prayer cards down through the ages. It used to be that whenever Mandy, our daughter, got a hair change, hairstyle change, she wanted to change the card, but now it's just us, so... Uh, we're, we're thankful. Uh, Mandy is uh, a missionary also with ABWE working in Montreal in a church plant there and serving the Lord two and a half hours from us. So that's like the cherry on top of the Sunday for us. Uh, ben and his family are right in the middle and he's on church staff up in Traverse City. And um, we just are thrilled every time we go there and see how God is using them and our four grandkids. Actually, we're going there uh, this afternoon, so we're pretty excited. <laughs> and then our son, Ben, or Matthew, and his wife, he married a Quebecer, and they have a two-and-a-half-year-old, and they live right about 15 minutes from us and uh, go to our church up in, in Quebec City and uh, expecting another new little little girl we just found out at the end of January, so that's a little update on our family. So uh, we are part of ABWE, but uh, I don't know if you noticed my shirt. Well, you probably didn't. It's a little small, but if you look, oh, I'm pointing there, but you actually are looking here. Um, on the right side of that slide, ABWE, uh, just done a little bit of maybe rebranding is the right term, but uh, a global family of ministries, and part of that family is every ethne, which is used to be called ABW North America, every ethne, and if you know if Matthew 28, 19, uh, go to all the nations, and the word nations is the word ethne. You hear uh, other words, we ethnic, for example, in English. So 
part of ABW's ministry here in North America is to reach to the people of the world that God has brought here. And we still send missionaries around the world like you guys do from here in First Baptist Fenton. But God is bringing the world here. And so we can reach the world from right here where we live in North America. So we're very thrilled to be a part of that family. Uh, so every ethne, the, the logo, the, the two E's intertwined, and uh, the privilege of reaching the world that God has brought to us. Um, crossing cultures without crossing borders. I'm going to reference that uh, image again a bit later when we open the scriptures, but that's what we get to do. Crossing cultures without crossing borders now here's a tr it's not a trick question if you were here last time we came you know the answer already largest unreached people group in the western hemisphere anyone want to guess uh, well all right because time marches on i'll give you the answer and there it is french canadians uh it is considered by people who do all of the statistics the largest unreached people group in the western hemisphere Less than 1% of French Canadians know Jesus. And God's given us the privilege of serving there among them. Uh, we have a team that works with us there in, in Quebec. And um, on the left is the Wright family. Uh, they had come and studied uh, French in, and then gone to Mali, uh, West Africa, for 20 years. And they're, now they're back, and he's in the radio and TV ministry, French Christian radio, and uh, she's an educator. She's working, and with their their eight kids, not not all there, but uh, we we thank the Lord for them. And then in the middle, our teammates, the Billingtons, and their three boys that have been with us for over 20 years, and we praise God for them. They're also church planters. And then we have a brand new family, the Bats family. Alan and Melissa, and uh, God sent them to us just in June, and uh, we're thrilled. And I have a couple prayer requests. You pray for them as they adapt. There are two little girls, uh, Clara and Ruth, especially Ruth, are starting school for the first time, organized school, and then they know no French. So they're in a French Christian day school. And Ruth is really struggling. So as you think about the Bat family, please pray for them. But uh, a wonderful family, and they're going to help us to start a ministry to international students there in, in uh, the city of uh, Quebec City in French. So pray for them as they still are learning the language. Uh, this is our, our church, uh, Credo Baptist. Credo means creed, I believe. And uh, we are, uh, we, the church has been turned over to a French Canadian pastor, but we still have the, the joy of being there, kind of in a mentor, mentor coaching relationship. And uh, God's really, really blessed uh, Credo Baptist Church. Um, we have probably 10 different nations represented, 10 different, 10 different countries, because remember, the world has come to us. And uh, sometimes we sing, we sing in three or four different languages. We don't sing, well, I didn't sing, we sang well. But, but we try, we yes, do. we try. And <laughs> we're just thrilled that God has blessed us with many immigrants who are professional people that have come and have joined our church. And what a rich heritage that is for us. I want to just interject uh, because we were just praying for one of your missionary families who are in Cameroon. And I, we have four, I think that's right, we have four Cameroonian families who are part of our church that God brought from Africa to Quebec. We often ask these people who came from warm places, why Quebec? And, uh, the, well, I don't know that they're sure why, but they know that God wanted them where, where they are. But uh, what a joy to serve alongside of our African brothers and sisters uh, who are part of the ministry. Excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, uh, it's my turn. Um, so one of the, the, the blessings for us as we went to Quebec, God gave a burden for us to be involved in theological education. There was a small Bible college just beginning when we arrived in 1986. Barb and I were on the faculty there for over 20 years. And uh, through the course of those years of teaching, 
got to be a part of seeing people's lives being trained for ministry. One of the younger guys, uh, toward the end of the, that teaching time, uh, is the young man here with his family, Mikael Leroux, and his wife, Marie. And uh, they now have four children. You can see the picture. Uh, they, there's lots of energy in that picture. Um, <laughs> I, we have great pictures. One, one picture, Mikhail, I think Marie is a, a medical doctor, and she was working one Sunday morning, so he had all of the kids under his responsibility. But the little one, he's holding their baby at the time. Etienne was just very young. So he's up front, giving, I, think, I don't think he was preaching, but giving announcements, and he's holding the baby as, as he's um, giving announcements at church. But um, have you ever done that, James? <laughs> but I loved how you had this little guy up here with you this morning. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, congratulations. Um, but, but what we love about the privilege of working, uh, helping in training uh, people like Mikael, and now to be able to serve alongside of him, share preaching responsibilities, it is one of the joys of ministry. We have tons of kids in our church, too, and uh, we, we are so grateful. Uh, people didn't like the name uh, L'Ecole de Dimanche is what it sound, Sunday school sounded like in French, so they said, let's just get a new name. We'll call it the Zone of Discovery, Zone de Découverte. So we, in our zone, we have for 50 or 60 kids, and um, I used to do that at the beginning of the church plant, and, and now it's so much better. And, and it's so organized and excellent. Two of our, our Quebec gals just whipped that into shape, and um, we have all ages. But I praise God for the kids and for the teachers. All of you that are teachers is so, so important. So in um, 2020, February 2nd, who would have known that five weeks later something was going to happen that was going to affect everybody but we launched a new, I have to back that up, I'm sorry. So, yeah, the, so we commissioned a, a team, and you can see most of them in that picture. There were about 25 people from our church who were sent just across the city to start a new church. And, um, and of course, then mid-March, everything shut down, and, and so that was not an ideal way to start a new church. Um, it's not an ideal way to do church. But Maison Corandeo, which is the name of the church, the house of the presence of God, was established in February of 2020. And uh, by God's grace, in spite of all of those obstacles, they are moving forward. And the, the Bats family that Barb highlighted just a moment ago are going to be a part of that new church plant team. And they are so encouraged to have helping hands. But uh, we, we rejoice. And that's one of the things listed on the the prayer list if you take one of those cards to, to pray for this baby church as they are reaching another part of Quebec City with the gospel. So crossing cultures without crossing borders. One of the challenges is materials in French. Uh, we have seen materials that are translated into multiple languages and not French. We can't figure that out. But by God's grace, we have been able to be uh, to help facilitate so you can see six tools that are, are up there. The, the story of hope, the way to joy, and the message of hope, all developed by our colleagues at ABWE. Chronological Bible study, the story of hope and message of hope. Um, the message of hope is, uh, was developed for Muslim background uh, people. And uh, the, the way to joy is a new believer Bible study. And uh, all three of them are available in French and are being used around the, the French-speaking world. Uh, My Circle is a, an evangelism uh, program, again, translated into French. Uh, Re-Engage is a marriage seminar. It is being translated right now. And Small Circle is a one-to-one -one discipleship tool. And we're, we just praise God that all of them are either available already or soon will be in the French language so we can have tools that we can offer to people as they come to a knowledge of Christ or need to hear the gospel. Let's 
just a, a picture. I just wanted to share this little story with you. Uh, Vanessa, and there, there we go. Yes. There, uh, she's Cameroonian gal. She and her husband came to our church, a uh, young, young uh, immigrant family, and she asked to be part of the, the, to become a member. But in talking to her and hearing her testimony, the, the, the deacons felt that she, need, she maybe didn't really understand the gospel. So I asked the girl in the middle, Rochelle, who's one of our leaders, to go through the story of hope. And we did that for several weeks uh, with Vanessa and had to be on Zoom because it was during COVID. And at the end, she put her trust in, in Christ as Savior. And uh, just to show how easy and friendly, user-friendly those tools are. But I, I praise the Lord for, for, for people like Vanessa that are still hearing the gospel, even coming from another country to the States. And now they have a little baby, and it's a, a real delight. And another thing that God has given me a, a, the, the privilege of doing, I was asking the Lord, how could I reach into the community? And there's so many people uh, to be reached, but it's hard to find a natural way because Quebecers have turned their, their back on Christianity, and they're really postmodern and secular. But years and years ago, God put on my heart to teach English second language, and I do it out of our home. And so I would ask you to continue to, to pray for that because I have many students still and, and they still need to come to the Lord, but it is the most natural way to share across our dining room table and uh, share why we're here, share the love of Christ and share their lives. So continue to pray for that. Thank you. So from 1986 to 2022, and it sounds like Buzz Lightyear, but uh, and beyond, <laughs> by God's grace and enabling, uh, we're not hanging up our cleats or whatever other image we could use. By, and God has given us health, and we praise him for that and are thrilled that we continue to have privileges to serve him in Quebec. So the beginning of a missions conference, and I have no idea what others will say, um, but I'm thankful for the opportunity to begin. Um, and uh, what you don't know is actually us being here today was, it was a God thing, but it was sort of a, an asterisk on the page. And we were supposed to be in a church in New York today. And that didn't work. And I got a hold of pastor. I said, hey, could we slip in the side door on Sunday, October 2nd, and just soak in with everybody else? And he offered this opportunity. And so we're thankful. We're thankful we get to be a part of the beginning of your month of missions. And I pray that it will be a great encouragement to you as you hear from your missionaries, as you hear what God is doing in other places on the planet, because he certainly is at work. So I want to look with you at a very familiar verse. Um, and uh, if you don't like the translation on the screen, you can open your Bible or your phone um, and uh, find Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And uh, I, I, I don't want to insult your biblical knowledge. I know this is déjà vu. That's how you say it in French. But Yogi Berra said déjà vu all over again. You know, so, um, so Acts 1, 8, we're going to just sort of review a bit of, of, of biblical truth. And, and I hope it will encourage you. You will receive. These are the words of Jesus. You will receive Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Great promise from Jesus just before literally left to go back home to his father. Uh, we've been a part of your missionary family. We've rehearsed that for a long time now. And... Uh, we love and appreciate your support down through all of these years. Um, I know that you are active. I love the, what jo, uh, is it Joan, Joanne? She gave a little bit of, a, uh, of an overview of the number of missionaries. That, and some of them other places on the planet, some of them locally here. Uh, you have evidenced a, a love for missions and a desire to be a part of what God is doing here uh, on on the planet Earth. We know you care about missions. 
Uh, we, we know that personally, as you have served and ministered alongside of us, made it possible for us to be involved in ministry in Quebec. Um, I guess it is sort of a shocking thing when we look on the missionary board and realize that we are now among the oldest of your missionaries. It's all right. Still standing, <laughs> vertical, and uh, thank God for the strength he's given us to, to serve. So actually, Acts 1.8, uh, it's not even the whole verse I want to look at. I really want to look with you at one word. Uh, so we're going to really, really, uh, you know, laser focus here. And, and the, the word, actually, I want to take us back to another two verses that you know equally well. We call it the Great Commission. Again, something, some of the words of Jesus just before he left to go back to heaven. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What a great promise. Jesus didn't leave us alone. In fact, he said when he left that we would do greater things than he had done. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't seem possible, except that he gave us the Spirit who dwells in us and enables us to accomplish the good things he wants to see accomplished for his glory. So in, in the giving of that command, uh, we use the context of Acts 1-8 to look at how it all began. And it began in the city of Jerusalem. You know the story so well. The day of Pentecost, um, 3,000 people, responded to the gospel invitation. Um, there have been a few hundred years of preparation for that, but imagine that, 3,000 people who came to Christ. Evidence of God's power. And then in Acts chapter 2 through 7, the, the, the story of the early church, its birth and early growth, um, things were happening, but primarily Jerusalem and uh, Judea, the, the, you know, the area there around the city. As we're reading through those early chapters, it would appear that things sort of got bogged down because Acts 1.8 had said, you'll go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, and it had stayed pretty much local. And so, as you know, we read in uh, Acts chapter 7 the story of Stephen, uh, the first martyr, of the church, who rehearsed Israel's history and talked about their need of Christ, the need of the, the Messiah who had come, and in anger, they stoned him to death. And then we read this verse, Acts 8, 1. So we had 1, 8, now here's 8, 1. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. God's plan was that they would start in Jerusalem, but that it would spread. And it would spread beyond Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and ultimately to the ends of the earth. So the word that I want us to look at, and I look at the clock, and I can't even talk this fast in English. You're, it's a good thing I'm not preaching in French this morning, I'll tell you that because it would be half time. Um, but the word is Samaria. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Now, when Samaria comes to mind, if I had more time, I'd let you answer this question. I'm not going to let you. But when you hear the word Samaria, I would suggest that here are some of the things we think about. We think about ten tribes in the north of Israel. We think of a, a capital that was established where they uh, invented, they took the Old Testament truth, but then invented uh, their own version. They developed a place to worship so people wouldn't go back down to Jerusalem, to the temple. Uh, they were considered to the Jews in the south of the country. They were, um, they were mixed breeds, half-breeds. It was a territory that Jews would not even travel through. 
Now, they took the long way. They would cross the Jordan River, go up the east side of the Jordan, then go back into Galilee so they could avoid Samaria. Um, it, this, uh, this is um, really something. You know the story in John 4, the Samaritan woman? This is what she said to Jesus. How is it that you, a Jew, ask me for a drink, a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Here's what the Pharisees said. That the best way to insult a Jew was, listen to their words. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Samaria, <laughs> Samaritans. Put yourself in the context of the day when Jesus said, you're going to go to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and then out, out to the rest of the world. But wait a minute. Samaria, Samaritan, there's a story, isn't there, somewhere in the Gospels that talks about a Samaritan? You know that story? The good Samaritan? Um, Jesus told the parable. He told that parable to a less than responsive um, crowd, to a, an answer to a less than sincere question, so who is my neighbor? And I'm sure you've heard the story, so I don't have to retell it, but um, I suspect there was maybe even an audible gasp when Jesus sort of brought it down to the final Conclusion of the parable, and the folks who listened were listening realized that the hero of the story was the Samaritan. <laughs> so, this idea of Samaria and Samaritans, it's not a new idea when we arrive in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But here it is again that verse you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and then to the end of the earth. All right, so Samaria. What can we say about Samaria? Well, we don't live in the Middle East. And in fact, Samaria doesn't even exist anymore. Not in the sense that it, it, it was known back in the, the day that Jesus was teaching and training and preparing his disciples for ministry. But we can't just shrug our shoulders and say, well, I guess it doesn't apply to us. Uh, we wouldn't do that with Jerusalem and Judea and the ends of the earth, part of that verse. But, but I want to just ask, and I ask the question, first of all, of myself. So I'm, my, I'm not up here trying to, you know, shoot at anybody. It's the old thing, if I point at somebody, there's three fingers pointing back at me. But what do we do about this whole idea of Samaria? Well, we know that Jesus loved Samaritans. He said, uh, John chapter 4, the beginning of the story of the Samaritan woman, it said that Jesus said to his disciples that he had to pass through Samaria. So if Samaria doesn't exist per se, Today, um, what do we do with that? I, I want to give you a couple of quotes. Well, thank you for kicking us off, Brother Vanilla. It was really a God thing as we had been planning a, a month of missions. I was like, we have all the month ready, but we don't have someone to open. And then his message, or he sent me a message. And I was like, oh, man, I hate to put this on him. But it was really the Lord. And uh, I'm preaching next week on the mode of the gospel and later in the month on the goal of the gospel, but I'm going to be finishing just, it's amazing how it ties in with your message, uh, Paul's list of a bunch of names, and it's a bunch of slave to bond slave to, to rich to poor to different ethnicities, all these names of relationships that Paul had with people of different ethnicities and social, different sub levels of the society, and so we're going to be looking at that next week in the mode of the gospel. So um, I'm going to have you and your wife. They're going to be out in the back four here. It's so much more than just sending financial support. It, as a church, we really want to grow in our relational support. When missionaries come, you know, we really want them to come, and they're, they're our family. 
you know. And so if you can encourage them, if you can just, you know, tell them that was the best message that you ever heard. And we wish our preacher preached like that every week. Let his head get even bigger, okay. And uh, uh, so be a blessing to them as you leave. And then next week, if you, if you could, uh, Heather Har will be presenting in Sunday school. She'll give a quick little update in here. Um, but she's a missionary to Russia, and she hasn't been back in several years, so we're excited to have her. So thank you for being with us as we kick off our missions month. And many people are like, Pastor, what can we do? There's several small groups that are doing many things. They're going to target missionaries. They're going to reach out to them. They're going to write cards. They're going to send letters. They're going to do a lot of different things. There's many things you can do. And if you're looking for something to do, let me know, and I can put you in contact with some missionaries that you can support. Uh, so, all right, why don't you guys, let me close in prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you so much for this time that we had this morning together. Thank you for the Vermilias and their update to us. Lord, it's so encouraging to see, um, Lord, Credo Baptist Church and what you've done there. And, Lord, the people that represent so many different nations and ethnicities and children to adults. And, Lord, how they planted another church. And, Lord, we thank you for just allowing us to partner with them these 30-plus years and to see what you've done in Quebec and Lord, it's such a blessing to see multiple generations serving the Lord over different generations and seeing the fruits of their labor. And so, Father, as we work through this month through several different missionaries, Lord, I pray that you would allow our hearts to be stirred uh, for people. Lord, and, and it's not just that we send other people to do it, but Lord, you would stir our own personal hearts for our neighbors. Lord, help us to love them as you do. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, you are dismissed. Thanks for being with us.